What's the three biggest lessons you've learned over the past year in business? I'd just give you one that I don't know shit. This week especially, I've learned that I know nothing. And you start with just trying to provide a value. My value is I was helping really large businesses. I always help them grow their social media, mainly YouTube. If I could 10x the amount of views they were getting and decrease the amount of time they were spending on it, I could make them a lot of money. And I've been doing this and I've been making people a lot of money. I've finally started to get compensated a little bit for that. We're now trying to build a team. We're getting a little house here. We're moving things along. Well, you, you learn all the things that you don't know. And very recently, since I've started to expand and we started to take on a few new clients, I took on a new client and legally, they basically said, dude, you had no contract, therefore I'm not going to pay you. And I said, well, we've been working together for the past five weeks. Why didn't you tell me this before? Because they got a bunch of free work. And that's just shit that happens. And if you make as many mistakes as humanly possible, as quickly as possible, you can improve a lot faster. And an example, I work with Robert Kiyosaki. He wrote the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. We just started working together. That is one of the reasons why I'm, we just moved to Scottsdale, Arizona to be with Robert and then another guy, Ken. But I was telling Robert about this because this guy owed me a bit of money and he basically said he wasn't going to pay. And there was obviously some legal actions we could have taken. I just said, it's not worth the headache. It's a learning lesson. I'm going to move on, get better and uh, just, just keep on improving. And Robert said, that's not too bad. He's, when, he was, when his business was at its peak, he, his attorney, the one that he hired, he also hired his attorney's wife as some sort of assistant type of role. And over a few month period, as the brand was really growing, when the business was taken off and it was worth a few billion dollars, his, his, that lady, she said, well, just sign here, sign here. And he ended up getting completely fucked. And he ended up having to spend over $30 million in legal fees. And when he was telling the story, he was obviously incredibly frustrated looking back at it. And so I'm thinking, I got the easiest lesson in the entire world. I got like $6,000 that was, that was lost. Robert spent $30 million on this. And so the more mistakes you can make, the, the, the younger you are, the quicker you are going to improve. Or you're going to stop. Because this this is incredibly frustrating. <laughs> I mean, it is it it doesn't mean I'm happy about these situations. I'm inc incredibly furious at myself at everything about the, the, a lot of business in general. Because I am someone that just says, if I agree to do something and you agree to do it, we're gonna do it. And and that's as simple as that. And obviously, it's not like that with everybody. So just learning and that's why legal is now pretty damn important and so then you just learn all these things and then you hire people and then you learn that you don't know how to hire people then you realize that people don't want to listen to you and then you realize that you don't know how to have good company culture today we were out with ken ken has a few billion dollar business where he has around ten thousand apartments but he is a completely vertically integrated company and one day a year they take the entire company he's a he's a entire united states company in every single department uh they all don't work for the day and they go and spend their time at a charity because ken is a full-time director of philanthropy who just gives away his money in his company that's run by the employees that is something that creates company culture. And when you're there, there was about 100 people at this warehouse today at St. Mary's Food Bank where they were all packaging food and they were getting them in these boxes and they were transporting them. And there was 100 people just in Arizona. And then, well, that was in, that was in like the Phoenix area. He has another department in Tucson and, and Vegas and, and Texas and different parts of Texas and other parts of Arizona. And so that is just, and when we were at that food bank, I mean, it was electric. It, it was electric. It's like when you and all your buddies go or, and you're, you go on a class field trip and people are just jamming. Everyone's super happy. There's shit going on. Everyone's just boom, 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 boom. And so that is stuff because I get to see businesses from the inside and I have such great mentors around me. You get to just learn faster and you can learn from other people's mistakes, but you're still probably going to make the mistake yourself. So I don't know what the top three things I've learned are, but I, I think this was very much needed because I felt on top of the world a few weeks ago after, after I was speaking at Limitless with those guys and I closed a bunch of clients or there were hard, soft commitments, which I thought that meant you closed the clients. I was like, dude, there's going to be multi six figures coming in per month profit. 
this shit is so easy. <laughs> I mean, that's honestly how I felt. And then you get a big old Mike Tyson punch in the face, which is okay. I mean, that everything is just going to continue to get harder and harder. And the bigger you get, the more bullshit you're going to have to deal with. It doesn't get easier. It just continuously gets harder forever. And since I'm now hanging out with Robert a lot, I'll ask him very broad questions like this when we're recording and he'll get angry at me and he'll say, Josh, you, you don't get it. You're too naive. You don't understand. I've been doing this since I was seven years old. He said, I'm, I, I don't know. He's in his late seventies now. And he says, I'm still doing this every single day. It doesn't get easy. It never was easy. It never will be easier. And so if you're asking for an easy answer, we shouldn't be doing this. I'm like, well, Robert, I, I understand that we're trying to give the viewer something, <laughs> but but he's tr it's true. It's true. It's exceptionally difficult, exceptionally stressful. A lot of nights I'm going to bed angry at myself, especially since we moved here to Scottsdale. There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of things going on. I'm just, I've been very, very angry. I'm actually trying to control my emotions. I think there's a lot of reasons for that. What's the biggest things you've learned since we started living together in Columbia? And then since we got to Arizona and you've seen everything kind of develop over the past few months? Yeah, I think... It's kind of similar to what you were just saying and what Robert, how he answered it when we asked, oh, what's the, the biggest challenge you've had? Um, since I really started working with you and like grinding every day, it's, I'm very aware now that it's never ending. There's always something, oh, let me speak, speak on me. There's nonstop problems that's something we le we're learning from from george too when we're flipping their trucks um but you just have to keep freaking pushing through it there's constant resistance and it's not like you just you know you work hard for uh, a year or two it's if you're growing there's always going to be uh shit that you have to go through and push through and keep learning and you learn by fucking up and failing so if you're looking to just breeze through business or um, not have any failures, you're just not going to grow that way. You're not going to get better that way. Um, so I, I think also you just got to have faith in what you're doing or else I don't know what else can kind of push you through it. You got to have something of uh, Rob saying. Uh, what does God want you to do? Yeah, yeah, he's saying. Like, what does God want you to do? What do you actually, um, um, so what does God want you to do? Me? Mm -hmm. I feel like that's an interesting question because it's not, I don't, I don't think it's supposed to be clear. I think going back to what you were talking about, like maybe yesterday or the day before about intuition, like you have an idea and you know, kind of on the day to day what you should be doing, but I mean that's a, a very difficult question. That is, I, there, there's so much, there's so much that could change that could be changed about the world that we live in. So, um, well, Robert's cl crystal clear about God, what God wants him to do. God mm -hmm. wants Robert, or at least this is what he he says is he wants to financially educate as many people as humanly possible to help them not go through the same thing as poor dad did, and so he wants to actually help people become more financially educated and more financially liber literate. That is genuinely what he wants. And what's amazing at, is at Robert's old age, Robert doesn't read books, he studies them. And he studies them every single day. The amount of work that he's going through on one single book, I've never done in my entire life. And this is someone who has billions of dollars. He could do anything that he wants to, and he's still doing this every single day. And that's because he wants to relay that message to other people. It's it's truly inspiring in a lot of ways. And I don't know what God wants me to do. I mean, I have an intuition for a bunch of different avenues that I, I think. I think that I need to become the best version of myself. That is something that I I, I just would, you, you if I was on my deathbed, I would know if I gave it my all in life. And that for me scares me more than anything. If I was going to die, let's say in a few years, and I knew that I could have done so much more than what I actually did. And I, th it's the what if that is really terrifying to me is what if I could have done this because in, I'm such an arrogant bastard. And I just think that I can do anything when I'm sitting dreaming at nighttime, I just want to conquer the world and I want to go, 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 and just do 
anything. And I, because I genuinely think I can, which you could say is an arrogant statement to make. It's just what I genuinely believe. And so if I didn't put all my effort into trying to do that, then I, I would think I'm, I'm just failing myself. And I don't know how that develops, but it starts by learning as much as humanly possible how to make money, which is why I'm kind of in the business that I'm in, because at a young age, I'm able to incorporate myself into the largest businesses in the world and see how they operate, see what they're doing and learning from that, which is an invaluable lesson. I, it's, it's hard to even comprehend how much value you get from being hands-on in these businesses, being able to ask every single question that you could ever have and get it answered at any moment. And so you have so much time in life when you're young. And so I don't know what's going to happen, but it's just going to keep on hammering it down.